We have with us a few IIT Madras faculty and one faculty from CMI who have given online courses. They have graciously agreed to share their feedback and experiences. So now I would like to invite Professor Niket to please come over and share her experiences, sir. Professor Niket is offering a course in MATLAB programming in Jan 2016. Uh, hello, everyone. It's uh, nice to see you all uh, over here. Uh, this uh, January to March, I'm offering a course on MATLAB programming. So how this course actually started was uh, previously, I uh, last year, I had offered a course on uh, numerical methods, computational techniques uh, for chemical engineering. And I got uh, emails from four or five students asking, the, asking me whether or not, uh, because MATLAB is uh, one of the important uh, uh, you know, softwares uh, that students felt. So I got a few emails from the stu from students asking me whether MATLAB would be taught in uh, an online course, and we didn't have that course. And interestingly, there were a couple of students, one from IIT Gandhinagar and uh, one from, uh, I think, SRM College, who actually found from my website my office phone number and actually called me in my office saying that, is, would it be possible to offer uh, a course like this? And that's where I got uh, started talking to Professor Andrew, uh, Professor Pratap, and uh, Bharti, uh, Madam. And uh, that's where this course uh, came from. Right. Thank you very much. Professor Deepak Kamani. Professor had a course in artificial intelligence last semester. Thank you, sir. Good morning to all, and welcome to IIT Madras. So my name is Deepak Kamani, and I work in the area of artificial intelligence. And uh, I offered this course uh, last semester, which was called Search Methods in Problem Solving. And the next semester, I'm offering a course on Knowledge Representation and Reasoning. These two courses, in some sense, form the very basis or foundation of what we call as classical AI, which, of course, is a little bit different from what is more fashionable nowadays, which is machine learning. And I think one of my colleagues is of also offering a course on machine learning. But this classical AI is basically the AI that you here talked about when in TV programs when they say AI will take over humanity and things like that. How does a machine represent the world around it and reason with it and solve problems in the world essentially. So both these courses are courses which I actually teach here at IIT Padras and they are identical. In fact, the lectures that we have recorded were recorded while I was teaching the course. So the same course that was taught to IIT Madras students is also being presented in NP10. So that actually brings me to this problem, which my colleagues uh, Andrew and Bhaskar, our director, have already mentioned, which is that there is a problem of impedance mis mismatch, essentially, which I also noticed. That I tend to teach the course as if I'm teaching an audience which is interacting with me and which comes and asks me questions at times. But that, as we discovered in the last semester, does not happen. And as Andrew said, a large number of people actually drop out, essentially. And at some point, I noticed that the people who were left who were asking questions were mostly from the industry, essentially. people who were working somewhere and who wanted some clarifications. And most of the time, they wanted some extra time for assignments. They said, no, no, we are working in the industry. Please give us more time in assignments. And very few from the student side, essentially. Uh, and this is where I hope, as my colleagues have also said, that the chapters will help us reduce this uh, mismatch between how we offer a course and how the students are able to benefit from it. Because from a teacher's point of view, it's always gratifying to teach a few people something which is useful to them. But it would be much nicer if you could teach a larger number of people, and which is what this MOOC is all about. Essentially. So I think going forward, we should try to see how we do this. And I hope the local chapters will be instrumental in encouraging their students to ask a question. Because students always feel that, oh, it's a very silly question. Somebody will laugh at me or something like that. And they don't ask the question. And then they get left behind. And then they drop out, essentially. So we, I feel that the local chapters can help tremendously in that. From our side, I can try to see that my exams are more tuned towards the online course and less towards the course that I offer here. Because the exam, in fact, that I gave last time was, it was the same as the end semester exam I gave to IIT students. And I could see that the, there was a performance difference here. So we need to reduce the impedance mismatch. And that's my main feedback, uh, having offered this course. And I hope we can both work together to do this, essentially. 
and I hope uh, you will have students doing my next course, which is the second part of artificial intelligence, which is focuses on representation and reasoning. How does a agent represent the world around it and reasons with it? So, thank you. Thank you, sir. We have with us Professor Mathun Logan from CMI. I'd like to invite Professor to come and share your experience, sir. Sir has done, uh, conducted courses in design and analysis of algorithms and Haskell's programming. Thank you, sir. So it's a pleasure to be here. So I'm not from IIT Madras as you hear. So actually, it's been about a year since I think Andrew approached me to get involved with NPTEL. And I, so I won't talk too much about the algorithms course itself. I think a lot of things have been said already about the feedback and all that. But I just want to point out that I am involved in this from many sides. So I've, first of all, unlike Deepak, I don't teach algorithms in CMI. They would not let me teach algorithms in CMI because I have many more qualified people to teach algorithms. And I think that helps because I'm not an algorithms person. If I teach algorithms, I think I can uh, make concessions for the fact that people are not experts in the area. So that is a, I think it's a huge thing. But for the last 15 years, or actually maybe 14 years, I have been involved at the other end of the spectrum. I have been teaching high school kids uh, algorithms for uh, the Informatics Olympiad. And uh, then uh, I got involved a couple of years ago when Microsoft Research started a program to try and offer online courses matched more to individual university syllabi. So they were trying for BTU in Karnataka. And then this came up where I got the flexibility of both worlds, which is I could offer an online course but teach what I wanted to teach and not what some other university had prescribed. And I found that very liberating. And uh, I think um, my other hat, which is that I am uh, on the ACM India Education Council. So speaking from a purely computer science perspective, I think there is a lot of uh, concern and a lot of interest across industry and academia in trying to make uh, teaching of computer science in India more effective at all levels. So I have been talking to various people from industry about this issue about you know how to get uh, industry to make some kind of formal uh, record of online courses in their selection process. At the same time we are also talking to various people from different universities about how to allow some flexibility in taking these courses for credit. So I think we need to work and uh, it helps that I can talk to NPTEL and you know maybe work together to offer different modes of, of, uh, of offering these courses to try and make all these things happen. So I think that this is a very exciting um, medium and I think as Bhaskar and others pointed out one of the big differences is that we are largely addressing students as opposed to self-motivated uh, learners. I think self-motivated learners are ideal targets for this kind of thing because they are doing it since they want to do it, so you don't have to really spend too much time. This is when I deal with Olympiad kids, this is the model. You know, I don't have to tell them, they are the ones who are pushing me to give them data. But if you are asking you know, students who are already involved in the regular program to take additional work, then you have to give them a carrot at the end of it. So Microsoft uh, Research's model was that you align it to the syllabus so it can help. But the syllabus and the exam pattern may not be the best uh, way to deliver knowledge. So hopefully the other carrot could be if it is actually a, a valuable, the certificate has its, an independent value, then people might be motivated to study this. The other part of this thing is that of course, uh, I think that it's very good to have basic courses like I mean computer science, like you know programming, data structures, algorithms, at, because at school level we have very poor uh, penetration. I think most people in schools don't even understand what computer science is about. And for me, for example, I can make this available to them saying that, you know, for example, these Olympiad students, if you want to learn programming algorithms, these are available for you without any constraints. You don't have to pay anything. It's up to you how much time you take. So that is one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is that, un unfortunately, the way our uh, IT industry is set up, there is no incentive for anybody to uh, go in for graduate studies. So there is a huge vacuum of people who don't know uh, advanced topics because they simply have not been exposed to it. And also in colleges, there is a, I mean, universities, there is a shortage of people who are trained to deliver this. So I'm also working with some colleagues this time. We had a, a course on model checking by one of my colleagues, verification. So I think we can also, so I think there is a market for both ends of course, you know, this very basic courses, which are wide spectrum, which can be used to lift critical thinking and problem solving skills in a large body of people and the scope for 
focus courses which could be i think i also get a lot of feedback as deepak said from uh, from people outside academia so my direct feedback through nptel has been very uh, you know i would say not very informative partly because the format is not very informative but i have got uh, i mean okay so you saw the numbers like of thousands of people and all that i have got maybe five emails but these five emails have been so reassuring and so positive and not one of them has been from a student but it's me i mean if if you get emails of that nature as the ones i have got it makes you feel that you are doing something uh, worthwhile and uh, and i think in the long run of course it benefits a lot of people but i think we need to work out on mechanisms to make the things more effective but i think that it's a start and i think nptel has made a huge i mean considering that this is less than a year and a half old i think in terms of offering courses the number of courses which and the scope which has uh, increased i think is great and i think that going forward it, if we have an embarrassment of riches it's only a problem that we would like to have i think and i really hope to and also from the cmi side we are trying to work more in expanding this into say areas more into mathematics and stuff so that we go a little bit outside the main engineering stream so hopefully you know this whole thing is going to go forward so i would like to actually congratulate all of you guys at nptel for doing a great job thank you sir if sir rajesh kumar sir if you could please come sir had run couple of courses last year and this jan he is running again language and mind course hello my name is rajesh kumar i teach linguistics in the department of humanities and social sciences at iit madras uh, in particular i teach courses in natural language syntax which is a different branch of linguistics for the I'll, i'll tell you my personal experience with nptel and how, how i got associated with this in in short uh, for the first time uh, when i went to nptel office which is located on the third floor of the icsr building was when a senior colleague of mine invited me to record few videos on the topics of my specialization in a course on introduction to modern linguistics that he was already teaching when i when I, and and uh, teaching those topics in any course were not difficult things to do when i went to the nptel studio and uh, <coughs> to, to cut the whole story short when i watched those videos later i couldn't watch 50 minutes video for 5 minutes or more than that it was horrible i i couldn't watch for more than 5 minutes and then it starts from there in the next semester i requested andrew pratap and others professor mangal sundar to allow me to record a full length course that i was teaching 50 minutes every day and i ended up doing for the whole whole semester with the students that was little bit little bit improved and since then i am trying to improve upon these things we started with a, a for for mooc we started with a course on language and mind and then Uh, for 20 hours last semester i i taught a, i designed a course on language and society which we introduced only for 10 hours and with the help of feedback and uh, difficulties and my own understanding of these things we are trying to improve language and mind once again and we are reintroducing this whole course once again so i'm not sure how many courses are being repeated but i think mine is before mine is also one of them which is being uh, being read up first time uh, to to tell you a little bit about language and mind also uh, the, the you can look at the contents people who take the courses they look at the contents but when when nptel started uh, this uh, program i thought the maximum number of people who will be involved in these courses will be 20 uh, when i got the number there were 4000 it was though i didn't meet with meet with them in person but that was also a scary to be interacting with many people uh, more than more than 500 people were actively watching videos and uh, not not 500 people were asking questions on po- forum but definitely huge number of people were asking questions on forums and yes sir it was true that lot of people were calling in offices and sending it iitm emails and other other things as well it's it sounds 20 hours it says 20 hours for us it is not 20 hours beginning from recording to 
the end of the delivery, it's more than 250 hours, I guess. But I don't know. I have not calculated those things. In any case, uh, to conclude, I, I would like to say one more part of my experience. So since I started recording courses, uh, few, few videos for the first course that I did, and until now when I uh, record courses for uh, videos for other courses and keep, keep revising and redoing things, I, I came to uh, know and meet with the staff at NPTEL office. I, I must tell you, it's my personal experience that uh, they help you do anything that is possible and everything. They extend uh, their hours, they stretch their limits, and uh, Saturdays, Sundays, everything that is possible that has been done uh, by the staff members, camera people, uh, editing people, and every, everybody inclu included. And it's been it's been wonderful experience. I, and I must tell you, I have not had that experience anywhere in the world in India so far. It's been a it's been an amazing experience doing this thing. I'm sure your experience, your interaction with these people must not have been uh, very different. They they do their best. Best is a small thing to say. It's, they do everything that is possible to do. So I'm looking forward to another another semester. Language mind language and mind is going to be dealing with how uh, biologically embedded capacity of human mind helps, in, helps encode and helps decipher the common properties of language, underlying properties of language, and how, how it works. It's all about natural languages. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have Professor Arun Tangarala from Chemical Engineering Department. Professor has run um, a 20-hour course in Jan 2015. And he's going to be offering a 40-hour course in July 2016. Good morning, good afternoon. afternoon. Uh, it's always uh, great to be at any event associated with education and teaching. So welcome to IIT Madras. Uh, I just want to say, of course, about three things. One is uh, the great uh, initiative of NPTEL and uh, MOOC itself. And uh, second thing is, of course, briefly about the courses that I have taught and I plan to offer. And, and thirdly, about the NPTEL staff, I think uh, really Rajesh has uh, expressed everything that I wanted to say. So I'm there I'm going to just do a copy paste. But uh, I, let me say a few words. I'm sure Pratap and Andrew have said a lot of things about NPTEL. And your own experience must have uh, made you realize how great an initiative NPTEL and uh, now the MOOC is. When NPTEL started off, uh, I was a bit skeptical, to be honest, whether this would be popular or not. And I had several debates with Professor Mangal Sundar, who was uh, originally riding the chariot. And one of the concerns that I had was whether this material is going to be misused by several colleges and so on. Uh, I, I was told that rather than the misuse, the advantages are many. Because one, of course, we are now uh, trying to reach the community beyond the compounds of the respective institutes, be it IIT Madras or IAC and so on. It's, uh, it's really a very nice thing to know that we are able to reach the community. Of course, there have been other forums like AACT sponsored courses and so on. But those have limited outreach, I would say. I think NPTEL has, a tremendous, has had a tremendous impact. I don't think I need to add or say anything, the statistics themselves uh, say for uh, the great success of uh, NPTEL. But I think, yes, as uh, Rajesh said, there were certain limitations, although many, many have said that they have benefited through NPTEL web and video courses. I think MOOC is a great platform now, uh, and I hope that the community, the student community at large takes advantage of this. I think the 20-minute module, 20 to 25-minute module really helps, because today, as all of us know, the attention span of students is uh, quite short even for us to we won't be able to concentrate for more than 20 25 minutes so uh, i think it's a great platform and i had a great experience uh, teaching a mooc course the first thing that i had to learn is to wash the camera now we academicians have uh, you can call it a disease or a habit and so on we cannot stand at one place and talk we'll have to keep moving and so on and keep looking at, uh, at all directions so this was a big challenge for me, but somehow I could manage myself to master that in about a couple of lectures. 
But uh, once that was done, uh, I think it was easy. And I, as Rajesh said, it's not just uh, 20 or 40 hours. That's just a number that you see on the paper. Just add a multiplication, include a multiplication factor by about six or something like that. Uh, with all the re-recordings and I remember uh, during the time when I was recording, ICSR had other challenges for us. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the, I think there was a lot of uh, renovation going on. So, we had our own challenges to pause in between. You won't know that in the video recordings and all of that has been edited. But uh, yes, there were a lot of special effects that we had to face. But it was all a part and parcel of the game and we really enjoyed it. I just want to talk about particularly the experience that I had with the NPTEL course that I taught last time. It was on time frequency analysis, a fairly advanced course for many. It's an advanced course in signal processing. And uh, a lot of students, of course, initially enrolled, <coughs> but I was already cautioned that the number, whatever the N, will actually eventually drop to N by 20 or something like that, or even probably much less than that. And uh, depending on how what reputation you have outside the institute <coughs> as a tough uh, exam uh, paper setter, the number, the factor could be much lesser than that. So I think if I recall the stats, about 3,000 people had uh, 3,000 people had registered from all over the globe. It's not just India. So that was very interesting. And there were a few requests, if I remember, from people across the globe, a couple of them to conduct exams, uh, you know, outside uh, online and so on, do something about it. And I think now we, we are probably we've made some arrangements or we are still looking into it. But of course, I mean, we could go by trust and conduct an exam and so on. But that shows the popularity of MOOC. So it was about 3,000, but by the time the number of people who wrote exam, at least in my course, it's not a reflection of every course, it's about 35 or 40. So you can see how things drastically dropped down. But still, that's a great number because I don't want to go by the number who take the exam. I really go by the number who have registered because probably they look at these videos in leisure and so on. So that means we have really reached out to this community. Now the two courses that I'm going to offer, one is a short 10 hour course on hypothesis testing. I just want to give a very brief background, a minute. There was recently an academic summit at uh, Bangalore organized by the MathWorks who are the makers of MATLAB. And the, there was a panel discussion and I was uh, fortunate to be one of the panel members there. And the topic of discussion was how, how do we prepare the engineer of tomorrow? I said, you should also be concerned about the engineer of today. <laughs> so <laughs> we and also the past, but we can't do much about the past. But <laughs> Uh, how do we shape the engineer of tomorrow? I said, so all of us concurred that engineering is now interdisciplinary. There is no debate, there is no doubt about that. And the common theme and the common point that all of us stressed on is an engineer is supposed to be very good at approximating things, to be dealing, to be able to deal with uncertainties. We are not really giving exact answers all the time, which means we should have a good base in inferencing, statistical inferencing, estimation and so on. And that's something that is completely missed out in all the curricula across the globe. It's not just about our country. Across the globe, you don't see this uh, estimation or any component pertaining to statistical analysis on, in the context of engineering. There are pure statistics courses that we all take and conveniently forget the, uh, the hour after the exam is done. But that's not how it should be. We should learn how to apply statistical inferencing, because we all know today big data is a craze, but it's not a craze. We are going to have, we have to live with the data for several decades to come. So as engineers, we should learn how to make optimal decisions in the wake of uncertainties, how to optimally handle uncertainties. And that's why I said the first thing that we need to do is to learn how to test hypothesis, because that is how systematically we go through in statistical inference. So it's a short introduction to hypothesis testing. It's going to be a bit different from the way statisticians teach. Uh, and I, I hope that many of you will uh, register and take advantage of the course. The 40-hour course that I'm going to teach on, again, is in the same lines on time series analysis, which is a very popular course among our students for various reasons. Typically, this course is offered during the placement season, which I also call as a displacement season, because they are displaced from everything else. They're only worried about placement during that time. 
So, this time series analysis is all about analysis of statistical data and it is a huge hit among the students because they get jobs in financial sectors very easily. But you know the practicality is apart, very importantly this course is really at the base of all statistical data analysis particularly when you are dealing with time series data not just steady state data. So, it is a full 40 hour course where we will introduce what is a random variable and so on again from an engineering viewpoint not necessarily from a purely statistician's viewpoint. And all of you hopefully will enjoy the course because uh, it is for the first time of course you will get exposed to a lot of these concepts and so on. But <coughs> please uh, keep in mind that this is a very fundamental course if you want to really proceed uh, or have a career in data analysis or even understand how data is analyzed systematically. Uh, I think from my past experience again coming back to the final point uh, that I want to talk about which is the NPTEL staff. As I said Rajesh has, uh, Rajesh has really expressed all the appreciation that I wanted to uh, and I fully endorse and support what Rajesh has just said. It is amazing staff. They will just I do not know what their limits are honestly speaking. So, I do not want to say they stretch the limits. Whatever they do is the limit and then the limit changes the following day. So, uh, everyone technical administrative staff anything you want at any time of the day they are willing to help working on weekends, radio recording, editing and so on. I can tell you it is so boring I do not watch my own videos. So, for them they watch the videos and edit and so on. I think uh, a really big round of uh, applause uh, for the computer staff. Thank you very much and uh, yeah hope all of you take uh, full advantage of this MOOC and NPTEL and uh, yeah hope to see you around. Thank you. Thank you sir. Yeah, Professor Gaurav Raina is from Department of Electrical Engineering and Professor is offering a 10 hour course. It, it seems difficult to add much more in terms of uh, feedback compared to what the people have already said. So, I will keep this uh, really brief. Uh, first thing to say is that, uh, so I give a course in nonlinear dynamics. Uh, it is a very specialized course, fairly mathematical. Um, it is got engineering applications, but it is not sort of hardcore engineering uh, as yet, so to speak. Uh, typically, I get about 10 to 15 students in my class in IIT when I offer it. And uh, I was expecting about two to 300 to show up for this course. Um, I was really, really surprised to find when 2000 registered for this. And so, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to give a 10 hour one on nonlinear dynamics, learn whatever I could. And then next year, I intend to give a 20 hour base course in control theory, uh, which is much more commonplace in electrical engineering. Um, in summary, I had great fun and I am absolutely hooked, right? So, I can safely tell the NPTEL group that I will be giving at least one class every single year, right? every single year. Now, that is me, but I hope the students had fun as well. <laughs> that was from sort of my point of view. So, I did put in a lot of effort uh, because you say, you know, you are trying, trying to do this once, you might as well say it as properly and nicely as you possibly could. Uh, once you have said it as nicely as you possibly could, you realize that you have not said it as nicely, and as, as nicely as you possibly could uh, and luckily you can go back to it uh, the next year. I got one of the best compliments. Um, I mean, I got a bunch of emails and whatnot which, which sort of keep you going, but one of the best compliments that I got uh, was from a student at IIT Madras who did not really want to tell me, uh, but told uh, my PhD student uh, who also happened to be in my class in nonlinear dynamics in person and said, why does not he actually teach like, teach like this in class? <laughs> so. He was quite, you know, the person didn't want to tell me because he thought I might take it badly, but I said that's the best compliment I've probably ever got, <laughs> right? Um, uh, what, what else would I uh, like to say? Yes, it would be really, really nice to get as much feedback as we can from the students, uh, from the colleges, from NPTEL, right? Because there are small tricks, small thoughts, small ideas which lots of people have used sometimes consciously, sometimes inadvertently, but which have had a huge impact. And it would really be nice to just share all of these with us. You know, just to say that, you know, we always try to think of the best way to get an idea across. But somebody said, you know, why don't you teach the most common way that people make a mistake? I was like, oh yeah, perfect idea. 
You know, so if you can just get lots and lots of feedback, uh, and it, it, it's usually the smaller things, or which what we think are the smaller things, would actually have a huge impact, right? So that would be absolutely great. Uh, another point I'd like to make is on this sort of 20-minute format. Um, uh, attention spans and our, and our ability to get distracted in a world of uh, Facebook and WhatsApp is, is certainly there. But from a very practical point of view, a lot of students told me that if it's less than 20 minutes, then it's not an activity. Right. So I mean, if you have a really engaging lecture, I have sat, I have sat through one and a half hours and being spellbound by lectures. Right. But it isn't, you know, that luxury sort of isn't uh, uh, there uh, with us these days. And a lot of students just said that, you know what, I finished whatever I had to finish at 12.30. I had to go for lunch at 1. And just the fact that I had nothing to do in that half an hour, I actually sat and watched your video. So the very fact that, you know, attention spans, I mean, we can keep arguing what's the optimal size in terms of attention spans. But from a practical point of view, the very fact that once it crosses more than 20 minutes or half an hour, it becomes an activity in itself, acts as a bit of a barrier. Uh, the other thing is, a lot of people talk about, well, you know, you're, you're not in a live lecture, so it can be quite lonely for the student to, li to listen to this lecture on their own. Uh, I can guarantee that it's rather lonely for the faculty as well. Looking at the computer screen, sit, talking again and again and again and saying, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. It's hard work because it's much easier to even just come have a few points and just keep talking when there are people in front of you. And it's really hard work when you're sitting in front of a computer. In fact, right at the beginning, I made so many mistakes that I actually made two of my students stand behind my computer so that I just talked to them. They must be thinking I'm a bit mad, but I was like, OK, I did it two, three times, then I got comfortable with the idea of talking to myself. Okay. Uh, so in summary, um, yeah, the NPT, NPTEL team has been absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Uh, please give your feedback because that's the only way we can actually help and improve. Thanks a lot. And thank you, professors.